is hi to everyone. <laughs> I'm Bebe So I'm very glad to be here today. Kara asked me to talk about the San Francisco Bay Area Arts, and uh, of course that's a very large subject. I started curating science and technology art uh, about three years ago in the way that I understand it, and uh, I have been uh, learning about the Bay Area art scene as I go. So. So I'll be speaking from an outsider's perspective. I'll give you that little background about myself and about Asinoa so that you would have, know where I'm coming from and also have a context of my perspective. Um, a very brief start uh, in law in the very beginning of my career, but followed mostly by business in the mix of marketing, business development, PR, contract management, etc. role at either in the employment or independent consultant with a variety of industries. At the moment, I am uh, teaching executive education focused on corporate innovation at um, Stanford Business School, where I got my MBA. For a few years, I also had a run a media boutique covering the um, clean tech life sciences, health and environmental innovation. And uh, we had a web publication and uh, also produced digital media for clients for marketing uh, communication purposes. It was towards the end of that period that I discovered this intersection of art, science, and technology. And I've been so fascinated with it ever since that I couldn't stop pouring time in it. After curating a, a virtual gallery and blogging about the space for a while on the side, I'm evolving the business into a creativity agency. We're now starting to represent some of the best science and technology artists, polymaths, um, and teams. And um, recently, uh, a museum in Shanghai just accepted our proposal to um, have a group exhibition there. And uh, we are uh, assisting Tsinghua University in a major electronic art festival in Europe. So that as the um, uh, context of my perspective, but let's get into the topic of today. Everyone here is probably familiar with this story that raged in the media three years ago the infamous Google bus, which became a symbol of, um, of the income inequality, the growing divide, the intense tension between the art community and uh, the tech industry. Um, just an um, a, a anecdote that has some personal connection. Does anyone know um, cell space in the mission? OK, so I'm a tango dancer. And for many years, Wednesday night, cell space had a milonga that was well, well attended. It's the place to go for a New Evo style or alternative style of tango. That's how I know about this place. Um, cell space no longer exists. It's closed down um, because the site where it sits on 2050, Bryan Street, is the um, subject to a development project. And uh, people have been outraged. You know, they're calling uh, calling the project the beast on Bryan. There, a petition has been going on, going around, calling for a beauty on Bryan trying to stop the project. So, I mean, of course, it's not the artists, but also um, art businesses. And this is galleries that had to go from one site alone, uh, from that address in Union Square, because uh, MuleSoft was expanding. So that seems like a pretty grim picture, doesn't it? As we entered the first half of 2016, though, we're seeing a rather different picture, looking from a different angle. So this was in February. Pace, uh, the uh, New York-based Pace Gallery launched their first presence in Silicon Valley with a band. This was their, their pop-up gallery in Nalo Park. The first show was Living Digital Space and Future Parks, and you probably have all heard of it by Team Labs. And um, it's still going, and it's going to go till December. I don't have the uh, latest statistics, but the first three months it drew in 45,000 visitors, which was quite an envy for a lot of the uh, galleries or even museums in the, in the area. And then in a one-two punch, they opened their permanent location in Palo Alto. This was the line waiting outside of their reception. The opening show is by James Tyrell. Anyone know him? Oh, yes. Supernova. Then a few weeks later, another mega gallery, Kagoshin, opened in San Francisco. It's the 16th worldwide location of the gallery. It looks modest, kind of facade, but don't be deceived. Behind it, the first show had boasted um, big names uh, from modern art to present day, and here are some of the some of the names. This date was rather strategic because it followed the much anticipated grand reopening of SF MoMA a few days prior, which is now the biggest modern art 
museum in the country. It's about the size of New York MoMA and Whitney Museum combined. SF MoMA is not the only museum that is in, you know, enjoying glory these days. Asian Art Museum has expansion plan. Across the Bay, Berkeley Art Museum and Pacific Film Archive have slick new locations. I haven't been to either of those, but I was recently at Anderson Collection, which is the second of the three um, new buildings that came up in three years of this uh, really ambitious Stafford Art District. For those that are really plugged into the, to the art world, you would know that actually San Francisco is not considered to be a top tier art city. This is a recent uh, survey of the 50 most influential art world cities in 2015. Since San Francisco did not make the cut, we would rank even lower than Detroit. However, with the influx of the uh, mega galleries and the expansion of the, uh, all the top museums, that may be changing, and some is already talking about uh, an art resurgence. So we have, on the one hand, exodus, with artists becoming endangered species, and on the other hand, um, the city seems to be catapulting into, onto the, the world stage. There are also things happening in the middle. So in between the two Pace Gallery openings, uh, there's another major opening, the Minnesota Street Project, you probably also know about. So uh, they combine all the, you know, the artists and galleries and, and nonprofits uh, in a brand new project, in a, uh, a brand new concept. The idea is to uh, offer affordable rent and also to take out inefficiencies by sharing facility um, among different operations. So this is um, the venture capitalist, um, Andy Rappaport and his wife's way to step in and do something about the exodus. And uh, as the name suggests, it's on Minnesota Street. It's not random. It's a new anchor for a district that is already emerging as a new art and design district between the historical Dog Patch and Petrillo Hill and the Mission, which is known collectively as the Doremi district. So all of the museums, if they are for the top brass, the blue chip, big art, this is the, the up and, for the up and coming. So it shows, you know, it shows the up and coming work as a showcase, but it also shows um, it's a place where art is being made, in, you know, the creativity process is, is taking place. Speaking of where art is being made, here's another form of creative space and programs that is gaining popularity, not only among art institutions, but also tech companies. You're probably all familiar with Jirasi. Martha has, came to, has come to speak to Lisa, and um, you probably, this is in sharp contrast to Jirasi's really rural, serene setting. This is in a bustling, urban environment, Autodesk, Pier 9 operation. Basically, it's a place where artists, makers, and fabricators come together and create their cutting edge projects. So these are some of their, um, uh, some of their projects, and really, uh, really mind-boggling. These projects are pushing Autodesk's products to their, you know, beyond the, the limit. And also, in many cases, leading to new use cases that uh, Autodesk would not have thought of themselves. Here are some of the other residences with other organizations and, um, and companies. So now, with all of these conflicting forces and different movements in different directions, what are we to make all of this? As a whole, it seems that the, the city or the area is rising, is ascending in the um, international art stage from we're becoming something, if I can call it more provincial, to something that's more international. And the ecosystem is definitely changing, both in terms of uh, physical locations and the players and the, and the models. It also reminds us that um, art is probably not one face. Uh, the little word A-R-T has so many facets, so many layers, different aspects to it. So are these changes good or bad? Here are some of my humble <laughs> opinions or, or reflections. San Francisco Bay Area would not have been San Francisco Bay Area without its bohemian soul. Um, a little over 100 years ago, the city hosted the Panama Pacific International Exhibition. And this was when the city had been destroyed by a devastating earthquake. Um, and the half of the globe was at war at the time, so what did the city do? It put on a giant celebration, basically curating the, the whole planet, um, the best arts and inventions and industries 
uh, at the time and, and invited the whole world to come to see. So that is the kind of spirit of San Francisco. 